Question mark? Hello my friends and welcome to yet another video celebrating the 3DS, one of the most wonderful video game systems to ever be available for purchase at retailers that carry electronics. The number of amazing games that have been released on the 3DS is obviously too high for anyone to know for sure, but the most recent study on the subject had scientists estimating the number to be as high as 900 flillion. There are 10 games, however, that I myself enjoyed the absolute most. These were the games I dumped hours into like they were so much water. And you know what? I initially told myself this would be one of the rare lists that I actually put in some kind of order, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't stand to put anything on the lower half of the list. So instead, these are in no particular order at all. Sorry. But that's enough of the boring intro stuff. We got 10 games to cover, so let's get started. Flammers! What can I even say about Animal Crossing? It's the ultimate time waster, the ultimate escapist experience. When the world gets you down, you can always just pop open your 3DS and live in a world where things are simple, where all the people are nice and just sort of mill around all day talking about food and trading shirts, where catching bugs and fish feels like a legitimate life goal, where you can buy your own giant house for a reasonable price and spend all the time you like collecting rad furniture and weird objects to fill it with. Every Animal Crossing title has more or less offered the same basic experience at its core, but upon release, it was immediately clear that New Leaf was the best one to date by a very wide margin. This was thanks in large part to the player's new role as mayor of their town, which feels like a really natural progression of the series and provides a good amount of extra stuff to do. My life has become so crazy and busy that moving forward, I don't know if I'll be able to really, really get into another Animal Crossing game the way I got into this one. But if I can't, I will always remember New Leaf as the last time I spent countless hours living a second life that was simple and good, where I could literally go around shaking trees and money would fall out of them, and getting chased by bees every once in a while was my biggest worry in the entire world. I never got around to playing Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. Just wasn't really on my radar at the time, and I was kind of put off by the tacked on motion controls. But when Nintendo announced that the game was getting ported to the 3DS with regular controls, spiffy 3D visuals, and a new easy mode that ah, I would never use, suddenly I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. And when my hands did eventually get on it, I was instantly hooked. A few years later, its sequel would trump it in basically every way, but in the meantime, DKC Returns was easily the best 2D platformer I had ever played. The levels are exquisitely designed, the controls are tight and responsive, the difficulty is just high enough without ever feeling unfair, and there's a really nice amount of stuff to collect and unlock. Whenever I bring up these games, I am obligated to mention that I'm not even a big fan of 2D platformers at all, so it's really saying something when I tell you that DKC DK's first modern era adventure is an absolute joy from start to finish and beyond. Ever since playing Link's Awakening DX as a kid, I've been a massive fan of 2D or top-down Zelda games. I love the 3D ones too, obviously, but 2D Zelda is its own thing. It's special and engaging in its own unique way. It's sort of a condensed, more pure Zelda experience, without all the frills, and there's a much bigger emphasis on puzzles and dungeon design. I didn't slash don't like the 2DS titles very much, so to me, it was like an entire generation went by without me getting my 2D Zelda fix. Because of this, Link Between Worlds was a breath of fresh air. Sure, I've got some complaints about the game, Having yet another version of Hyrule on top of the two we already have is just silly. Reusing the map from Link to the Past feels a little cheap. The dungeons are so easy I can breeze through them in no time, and the item rental system takes the progression system I've always loved and throws it out the window. It sounds like a lot of really serious problems, but it is not too hard to look past all of it because it's otherwise just that good. Even if they're easy, the dungeons are really well designed, and the open item and dungeon format instills a very fun sense of freedom and exploration. Then the painting mechanic is the icing on the cake. It lets you traverse this old map in new ways, and the developers explored the idea to its fullest potential. Link Between Worlds is just tremendously fun to play. It's the sort of game I can sit down and run through pretty much any number of times. Oh man, I should play Link Between Worlds again. Funny story about Resident Evil Revelations. Before I had the money to buy the game, I played the demo for hours and hours. Just again and again and again. I basically got a whole game's worth of enjoyment out of the demo alone. And there's a reason for that. Resident Evil Revelations gave me something I'd been dreaming about for many long years. The ability to play modern Resident Evil on a handheld. And I tell you, this game is baffling. Absolutely baffling. 
How did they make a game look this good on the 3DS? The graphics are incredible. So incredible that it makes you look at other developers and other games and go, what are you guys even doing? And of course, the gameplay is great too. Certainly limited due to the nature of the 3DS, but thanks to gyro aiming, still good enough to easily scratch that Resident Evil itch. The story is nothing special, and some of the characters are actually pretty annoying, but it's filled with spooky locales and frightening situations and scary bad, bad goop mans, which was especially appreciated because of the not very scary at all direction Resident Evil games were heading at the time. Considering how tiny and low res the screen of the 3DS is, and how little the developers had to work with, it's incredible how much dread and tension the game builds. I remember playing it in bed, in the dark, and jumping and gasping audibly more times than I like to admit. Oh, oh, and to top the whole experience off, Raid Mode, an action-packed arcade mode where you run through remixed areas of the game, collecting weapons and upgrading them and leveling up and getting stronger RPG style. Needless to say, Resident Evil Revelations is in the 100 hour plus club on my 3DS. Speaking of playing a demo for hours and hours, I actually did the exact same thing with Puzzle & Dragons Super Mario Bros. Edition. There were only a couple playable levels in the demo, but I was so hooked on the gameplay that I ran through them ad nauseum before finally getting the spare cash to buy the game outright. It's basically a Mario version of the popular Puzzle & Dragons mobile game, and in fact it comes with a fully fledged version of that game on the cartridge, but of course, I'm a Nintendo fanboy and have only ever played the Mario one. The gameplay is really unique. It's something of a match three game, which I've always thought were pretty fun, but instead of moving one orb by one space at a time, you have a few seconds to move an orb around wherever you want, and the other orbs change places with it as you go. It's actually really hard to wrap your head around at first, but soon you learn how to work with different patterns on the board to make great combos. And of course, these combos are how you attack with your fighters, which you befriend and combine and evolve and level up like in any monster catching RPG. I do have a few issues with the game. Primarily, there's a lot of info it just doesn't really give you, and the numbers used in battle are so arbitrarily high that it's all completely worthless at helping you understand what's happening. And sometimes you'll make these gigantic combos and not understand why they do almost no damage. Also, the game is pretty darn cheaply made. Animations are stiff or non-existent. All the music and many of the assets are lifted from other games. Brief dialogue boxes tell the whole story. Thing about that is though, who cares? The game is loads of fun and it's got loads of levels to work through. If you're looking for a good puzzly time killer on the 3DS, look no further. I wanted to stick with major retail games on this list, but I'm gonna kinda cheat a little bit on this one and lump the 3DS's Street Pass feature and some of the Mii Plaza games together into one thing. I talked about this a little in my Goodbye to 3DS video, but it cannot be overstated just how much stupid joy Street Pass has brought me. I used to bring my 3DS with me everywhere, and so rarely would I get any tags that whenever I did finally get one and I saw that little green light, it was like the best thing that had ever happened to me. Getting to meet the person's me and learn a little bit about them and what games they liked, knowing that they actually passed by me at some point in the day, gosh, what a unique and uniquely Nintendo social experience. Thankfully, Nintendo set up relay points that could store several tags at once, so that if you went to certain stores, you could grab up a bunch of them without having to pass those people yourself. It was a little like cheating, but I did not care because it made playing games in the Street Pass Plaza, you know, actually possible. One time I stayed in a hotel for like nine days and their relay just fed me new tags the whole time and it was incredible. Speaking of the games, I never did get a chance to buy the new ones they introduced later, but I was way into Puzzle Swap, Find Me, and Find Me 2. Puzzle Swap was just an amazing idea, even if they gave us new boards 10 times faster than I could complete them. There's still a little part of me that I think will always regret not completing them all. Then of course, the Find Me games were a ton of fun. It was frustrating how each me could only do like one thing before being dismissed, but at the same time that drove me to get more tags and made close victories all the more rewarding. And whenever Nintendo had a special event and sent out Reggie or Shiggy or Iwata through Spot Pass and they were super powerful and would come and beat that monster you'd been <laughs> trying to beat for ages, and you're like, oh Reggie, yeah, thanks man! <laughs> My gosh, Mii's should never be that fun. Such a, such a simple feature should not make me so excited. 
Oh man, that on top of everything, most of Nintendo's first party games, and even some third party ones, use Street Pass to reward you with stuff. In Kid Icarus, you could get weapons. In Super Mario 3D Land, it was bonus rooms. In Link Between Worlds, you could fight Dark Links that represented other players. And in Resident Evil Revelations, you'd fight quote unquote, infected versions of other players. For such a seemingly simple thing, Street Pass entertained the heck out of me throughout my entire time with my 3DS. Now that I'm finally going to conventions regularly, I only wish the Switch had the same functionality. Big missed opportunity if you ask me. If you've been following me for a while, you probably already know my complaints about Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, so let's just get them out of the way now. The mission structure is a great big downer. It's incredibly annoying to feel like you're on a roll and you can't wait to go through that door or use that key you just found when EGAD is like, okay, you're done, come back now, and you're yanked all the way back to the bunker. Then of course the game lacks some of the interesting elements of the original, namely the portrait ghosts and the slightly more gloomy and realistic environment. Who cares though? Because you know what? Dark Moon is still a pretty darn terrific game. It adds mechanics that fit so well into the series that I sometimes forget they weren't in the original. The different mansions liven up the experience by consistently changing up the game's themes and visual palette. It has a bigger focus on puzzles and feels more cleverly designed. The visual style isn't as delightfully weird, but it's extremely stylish and polished, with tons of great visual gags and wonderfully animated ghosts and characters. And the graphics. My goodness, don't even get me started on the graphics. Just like with Resident Evil Revelations, it's like, this is even possible on the 3DS? I think two really big elements here that push the game above and beyond visually are Luigi's fluid animations and the lighting. I don't know if there are any other 3DS games with such subtle lighting. It seriously looks like a GameCube game, or maybe even better, and you just happen to be viewing it through a fuzzy lens. The low resolution holds it back, sure, but what you can see through those big chunky pixels, well, it doesn't look like a 3DS game. I'm pretty sure some sort of dark magic might have been in play when they developed this game. It looks too good. Between that and the simpler yet much more refined gameplay, this is one darn fine sequel to one of the GameCube's darn finest gems. So I had this weird thing when I was a kid where if something in a game was too intimidating, I would just not do it. And never do it. Ever. I bought Majora's Mask when it came out, and I did play it a goodly amount. But that game puts a ton of pressure on the player to do a lot of intricate stuff with perfect timing. That was bad enough, but when the time came to enter the Great Bay Temple, I got flashbacks to the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time and I just couldn't get myself to go inside. I was already intimidated by dungeons especially, but this one just sounded scary and hard. I'd rather just go roll around Hyrule Field as Goron Link some more. So I never played the second half of the game. I watched my friend beat it, but I never did it myself. So when they announced it was coming to the 3DS, I was all about it. I was a grown up, I didn't get hung up on stupid stuff like that quite as much anymore, <laughs> and I was ready. You know it already, or you've heard it all before, but Majora's Mask is an absolutely incredible game. I can definitely understand how the time mechanic might put some people off, and I don't think I'd like to see it again in a future title, but in this case it opened up a ton of very unique opportunities. Then the ability to transform into different Zelda races, to this day it stands as one of the coolest and most unexpected things a Zelda game has ever done. But best of all, the game is moody and atmospheric and surreal and just so creative. It explores themes of death and redemption and strikes emotional chords in a way that I don't think any other Nintendo game has even to this day. Despite its greatness, the game once had a lot of annoying little quirks that made it less convenient to play, but the 3DS version fixed up basically every one of them and threw on some beautiful new graphics to boot. Some people think the new visuals don't carry the same atmosphere, but I think they're just great. To me, this is the best way to play one of the most out there games Nintendo has ever developed. And I can only hope that someday we get something like it again. I've covered Samus Returns a heck of a lot of times now, including in a different 3DS list video I just did, so I don't know what I can say that won't make me sound like a broken record. But man, this game is a joy. It's, it's pure, pure joy. I never got to play Metroid 2 and had been waiting for a remake for many a year. I was in fact hoping for one specifically on the 3DS. And what happened in 2017? My exact specific wish was pretty much magically granted even if by then the Switch had recently launched and I 
Just hadn't thought to update my list yet. But it was still an old version of the wish that was granted, still counts. And I tell you, 2D Metroid has never felt this good. Each title, including both mainline and remakes, has improved upon the controls and Samus's overall ability to move, and the latest really is the greatest in this regard. Everything feels zippy and snappy and responsive and just good. And she doesn't have any of those old archaic limitations that don't make sense anymore. There isn't a ton of boss variety, but the bosses we do get are tons of fun. I absolutely love them, and the overall difficulty curve is really excellent. Then you got loads of secrets and power-ups, you got fun abilities to use, you got a great soundtrack, you got... you got a Metroid game! It's a Metroid game! A traditional one! On the 3DS! So yeah man, you bet your beam combo Samus Returns is on this list. As usual, I say the list is in no particular order, yet I save a particularly special game for last. Super Mario 3D Land is perhaps the most important 3DS game in my collection because it was the one that got me to buy a 3DS in the first place. Even after the crazy price drop, I was set on waiting for the thing to get a few more games before I took the plunge. But then on one fateful day, my local Best Buy finally took Pilot Wings out of their demo unit and popped in Super Mario 3D Land, and after playing it for about five minutes, I was like, yep, I'm getting this. I'm getting this right now. Later tonight on Amazon. What can I say? I thought the 3D effect was incredible, and the call of the first handheld 3D Mario could no longer be ignored. Super Mario 3D Land is definitely brought down by how easy it is. In fact, I don't think there is another Mario game out there that's easier. 3D World is the only one that kinda comes close. But the gameplay is so fun and the levels are so well designed that it really doesn't seem to matter. And similarly to Link Between Worlds, the low difficulty actually makes it really fun and relaxing to just run through pretty much any number of times. And with eight whole special worlds filled with remixed levels and challenges, bringing the total world count up to 16, there is a lot of game to burn through here, especially if you want to get all the stars coins. Sure, maybe the hybrid nature of the Switch brought 3D Mario to another level entirely with Super Mario Odyssey, and because of that, maybe history won't remember 3D Land with nearly as much fondness. But it will always be a first for the series, and I will always remember the countless hours I spent playing it. I normally like more complexity in my games. I like more mechanics and options and exploration and whatnot. Obviously, there can be plenty of exceptions, but for the most part, I think the more the merrier, and less is just less enjoyable. But this game is that special kind of Nintendo game that wiggles its way into my heart despite its simplicity, because it's just such a clever, condensed, colorful concoction of pure fun. No real thinking, no great challenge, no frustration, just fun, and a whole lot of it. So there you have it, the 3DS has once more been celebrated. You know what I want though, it is your top 10 3DS games down in the comments. Followed by your top 10 ice cream and or frozen yogurt toppings. Or you know what? I won't fault you for skipping the whole 3DS list and just posting your toppings list. That, that, that seems like the more, more important topic now that I think about it. I really need to start that ice cream channel, don't I? I mean, I've been talking about it for years now, you know? I, I need to just bite the bullet and get it done. Ice cream, uh, that's where the real money's at right now. A couple years, I won't even be YouTube gaming. It's all gonna be ice cream.